In this video, we want to go over the clock API functionality introduced into Playwright as part of version 1.45. So if you're going to follow along with this, make sure in your package, Jason, you've updated to version 1.45 or later, and make sure you also run your NPM install so you can make use of the updated version of the package. If you're on a later version, that's completely fine. Just make sure you're over, you're on 1.45 or later. So let's actually jump into the, the Playwright documentation a second and talk about what the clock API is supposed to do. Well, it's a way of accurately simulating time dependent behavior and it's really essential for verifying the correctness of your applications. They've got a lot of methods on here and we're gonna cover the kind of key ones that I've been making use of. But like I said, you can read through the documentation as well. And if you do have any questions for things they haven't covered, just drop them down in the comments below. So how are we going to test this then? So on commitquality.com forward slash practice, which is this page here, what we're going to do is scroll down to the bottom and we can see time testing. And as part of this, we have two different kind of components. One, which is just a timer component, which gives us the current time. And then we've also got a countdown timer, which reveals a special price. And we're going to test these individually but they're both on this page just for ease of use when you're looking into this stuff. First of all, the test I'm going to write is going to deal with the actual current time, and then we'll move on to the countdown timer, because what we should see is after this five minute timer, a little paragraph should appear to say you've won a prize. We'll come back to this um, as I'm working on the current time and you'll see this manually being triggered. So let's jump into the code then. The first thing I want to do with current time is Let's maybe set that clock to a fixed time. So at the moment, if I go to the page, it's just going to display whatever the current time is right now. But what, let's say I wanted to change the time to nine o'clock, 9 a.m. And we don't want to do anything. We want to set it as a fixed time. Well, this is going to be really easy to do now. We've got this clock API. We can say await page dot clock. And if you're not seeing this in your IntelliSense, it's highly likely you haven't updated your package or you haven't run NPM install. But going back to this, let's say clock, and you can see we've got all the methods here, and I'm going to say set fixed time. And this is going to take in a date object. So I can say new date. And in our example, we don't really care about the actual month and year, but we're going to set that anyway. So we're going to say 2024-0101-T, and here's where the time comes in. So we said 9 a.m., so let's say 00, 0, 9, 0, 0, 0, 0, which is basically saying set that clock to 9 a.m. And then we're going to go to the page, and we should see that because the system clock has been set to nine o'clock, that's what the page should display. And let's just add a little assertion in here. We'll say expect page uh, get by test ID, which I'm pretty sure it has a test ID of clock. I wrote that clock API. I wrote that clock component not long ago. So I'll say to contain text. And we could be specific, but I'm just going to say nine because we know that if nine's in there with zero, zero, we pretty much bang on the dot because of the time we load it, it's going to increase. But because we've set it as a fixed time, it will stay stuck at this nine o'clock. And tell you what I'll do as well. I'll do a page dot pause just so we can see it. Awesome, so let's run our tests. We're gonna run them in headed mode as well, just so the page shot pause takes effect. But what we'd expect it to see is this. Current time is 9 a.m. I could have hard I could have taken all this and put it into my expect, but as you can see, it's got through the expect, worked it working as expected, and it's hit our page dot pause. And if I continue, you can see here that the test has passed. Nice and easy. Now, what happens then if we say, instead of set fixed time, let's do set system time, and let's run the test. And what you see now is it's set it to nine o'clock, but not only that, it's also increasing the time and our countdown timer is running as well. But focus on this, you can see the time is increasing. So if you don't want to set the time to stay stuck at nine o'clock, you want to use the set system time method instead. I'm going to continue over that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to delete these. I'm going to put it back fresh. We'll keep the page dot pause. We might not even need it, to be honest. Um, but now then, we've gone through the basics of how you can stop stuff or set the system time. But what if we said we want to simulate kind of user behavior where the user will close the laptop lid and when they reopen the lid, it's gone to a specific time and it'll, carry, and it'll, and it'll stop at that point? Well, it's going to be really easy. And maybe I did want to keep the first part just for the date, but it doesn't matter. We'll rewrite it again. But I'm going to say page dot 
clock dot pause at and like i said this jumps forward in time and pauses the time once this method is called and no timers are fired unless we call one of these methods so this is basically like closing your laptop lid and reopening it and what i'm going to do here is bring in the new date like the other one did and we'll just keep it at at nine o'clock so it's like 2024 01 01 t09 Zero. And of course, it needs to be in a string format. But in this case, then, this is literally going to pause our clock for us and do nothing else at this time. Of course, once again, the date doesn't matter too much because we're not displaying anything of that, but it's the time we're going to focus on. So if I was to run the test, I'll tell you what I want to do is I want to put the pause above as well so you can first see the clock will be the normal time and then once we call this method it goes to the nine o'clock one so you see here that the current time is set as expected and then if i continue over it you can see laptop lid got closed opened back up and now the time is nine o'clock in the morning perfect now the next step is okay I've got a test where I want to pause it this time and then I want to resume it again to make sure everything's working after a specific time for whatever reason. Well, once again, super easy. We can say page.clock and it kind of give us what we could do inside the pause at method where it told us here these methods. But I'm going to use the resume one. And what this is going to do is it's just going to resume the clock after we've jumped to nine o'clock here. So here we are with page.pause on the current system time. We'll then continue over it, gone to nine o'clock, and now because resume is running, we can see that it's increasing again. The really nice, super easy way to deal with basic time. Now that's all I kind of want to cover for this component, but how about the, what, the timer that we originally talked about where look, now we spent five minutes, you can see here that U1 Go Subscribe to Commit Quality has appeared on the web page. But let's be honest, in your, in your test, you're not going to want to wait five minutes to see this. So what we want to do is we want to do a kind of fake implementation of the time function. And we want to say jump forward five minutes so we can directly see this message. So let's just take the only off this one and we'll keep it there just so you can see it. But we're not going to need to deal with that anymore. And we're going to say test.only so it only runs this test. And we're going to change the name to timer so we have no clashes. This is all fine. We can keep the pause method there. But what I want to do now then is so we'll keep we'll we'll get rid of this. And now what I want to do is I want to basically jump forward five minutes. So the first thing we want to do is we want to install a fake implementation of the time related functions. And to do this is just by saying await page dot clock dot install. And if I hover over it, once again, it's going to tell us exactly what I just said, is it's going to do that fake implementation of the following time related functions. And it says here, the fake timers are then used to manually control the flow of time in your tests. So we've installed it. We now go to the page. We'll pause at this point just so we can see that the time is there. But what we're then going to say is uh, jump forward five minutes. And there's two different ways you can do this. The easiest way, or I think is the is the neater way, is to say await page dot clock dot fast forward, and we want to say jump forward five minutes. And what we'll do as well is. Uh, we can check an assertion in there, but we might as well page dot pause. But I'll say await page await expect page dot get by text, and we'll take this text here that says you one go subscribe to commit quality, and we'll say to be visible. So of course this test would actually fail if it didn't hit that, but just so we can see and it doesn't drop off straight away let's add a page dot pause here so now in this case we're going to say go to the page pause it so we should see the timer just counting down we're then going to say jump forward five minutes and we expect to see that paragraph visible so let's run our tests and see what happens so here we are clock is counting down let's continue over it and you can see instantly jumped forward five minutes and you can see you one go subscribe to commit quality well, that's the first nice and easy way you can do this but the other way is using the fast forward function if i hover over it it can tell us here you can use it as a millisecond approach 
or you can use it in the approach I did where I said five minutes. What I could do instead is instead of saying fast forward, let's just say fast forward by 10 seconds. And let's just save it here. Let's run this in headed mode again. And you can see it's counting down. So let's just get it count down to 50. And then when I click resume, it should jump to 40. Oh, and it fails straight away, which is because I'm very silly. It's because I put it in as a string, didn't I? We didn't get rid of the string. So I was trying to read it in an incorrect format. So let's retry that again. So here we are, jump to 58. If I continue over, we should see it jumps down 10 seconds to 45. Of course, this test is going to fail because we still don't see that message yet. But that's how we can manipulate time and deal with these functions. So now you don't have to wait the crazy amounts in your test for whatever you're trying to look at. And that's kind of what I wanted to cover with this. Now, if you are looking through the API documentation, is there anything else you want clarity on? Just drop a comment below and, we'll, and I'll respond to that and help out where I can. As always, thank you for watching. Have a good day.